I've got no confidence in my loading list. Capitán, pass it. Well, then cover them. We should be underway by now. Course is set. Yes, sir. Right, check the engine room. Engine room. Uh, be ready to sail in, uh, say, 20 minutes. Ready now, mate. Would you mind giving me a hand with all this? Uh, Stuart, would you help Mrs. Bettis for with her luggage, please? You know me. Uh, we'd be expecting you, madam. Well, I almost didn't make it. And now I wish I hadn't. Well, I'm off to the showers, Captain. See you. Is Mr. Conway on board? Uh, you'll more than likely find him in the casino lounge. Beautiful day, Mr. Carter. Pedersen, sir. Mrs. Pedersen. Thank you. Shot, sir, on his way to America for treatment, I believe. Uh, by the way, Captain, uh, nobody for me about coffins. through the day. Well, there's one thing you can't do. What's that? Nothing. 
Thank you very much. My pleasure. Evening, Browning. I'd like to send this cable. You must be the new purser. Um, what is this? Some kind of code? Just send the damn thing. I have decided to tell you why I brought you here. Mr. Conway, you can't keep hiding forever. Okay, Rogers, say course the 085. Yes, sir. She's all yours. Good night. Hi, right, sir. 085? 085. Well, it's going to be very difficult. Beg your pardon, Mrs. Skinner. Could I have a word with Mr. Preston? Of course. I'm keeping him from his duties. I'm sorry. Vingt-un. Rouge, impair, passe. Oh, rouge. Hi, I'm Susan. Hi, Tony. Buy me a drink, Tony. Yeah, I'd love to. Repeat after me. I know. I must not interfere with the female passenger. That's a good boy. No bets. Good evening, Mr. Carreras. Good group you have here, Mr. Carter. Mrs. Skinner. Thank you kindly. Aha! <laughs> uh -huh. That was a great walk up the gangplank, Mrs. Beresford. Louis Carreras, at your service. Oh, what a fantastic camera. Hmm? May I see that, please? Certainly. I hope you don't take this personally, Mr. Carreras, but I've got this damn fool hang up about people invading other people's privacy. Excuse me. Uh, your camera, Mr. Carreras. Why haven't you changed? I changed my mind. You can't keep hiding behind that pillow going. Still, I know, but I wanted a drink, and it seems room service is non-existent while the captain's party's going on. Sorry. Yes, sir. Give me six martinis to go. I beg your pardon. Why don't you just take the whole bottle? I like the way you sing. Can I come along? Not right now. Just be sure you're home before twelve. Thanks, Daddy. and Jordan's compulsions. I once had that kind of compulsion, though I must admit I never sacrificed dinner to it. <laughs> Mrs. Barrister, would you kindly assist me? I'd be most awfully grateful. Only if you tell me about your compulsions, Mr. Fairweather. Oh. I used to be a jewel thief, a quite successful one. But time and age have rendered a certain incapacity. The brain is still functions. So now instead of picking locks, I pick brains. 
I steal other people's ideas. <laughs> in that case, Mr. Bearweather, we'll have to keep an eye on you and both hands in our pockets. <laughs> Do I take it, Mrs. Skinner, since you've just joined this cruise, that you are somewhat interested in gambling? Well, not really. Uh, well, actually, my horoscope said that I was going to take a Caribbean cruise. Did it happen to mention a tall, dark, handsome stranger? If you gentlemen would excuse me. Aren't you feeling well, Mrs. Skinner? I'm just rather tired. Is there anything I can get you? No, thank you. We're 20. Uneven, huh? Now, would you just uh, cover all those or four? Okay. 25 on red. I noticed, Mrs. Beresford, that Mr. Conway hasn't joined us for dinner. Oh, have you, Carter? Benson, don't forget the captain's dinner. Carter, this is the last time, sir. If we find Benson flat out drunk again, he's through. I wasn't aware he was missing, sir. We've checked every damn place there is, outside the passenger cabins. Uh, you're not suggesting that we search the state rooms, are Exactly. I was just going to my cabin. Good night, Mr. Carter. Good night, Mrs. Dan is asleep and does not wish to be disturbed. As you see, I just dropped in to see if... If you'll excuse me. I have a few. No more bits. 26 noir, pair et pass. 26 black. Here. You're short here, Frenchy. Pardon me? You're short. Poor. You're short. Je désolé, il y avait 18 years. No, désolé or not désolé. Uh, son, I got uh, 20 down here. $18,000. Right. Uh, just a moment. Just a moment. Just a moment. You just rest there tranquil. We'll pass the Supreme Court up here. 
what the verdict is. I'm afraid, sir, I do agree with the coupier. Inspector, perhaps I can be of some assistance. Let's play it back. What do you got? That thing taped? Cover the sevens, Frenchie. And uh, 20,000 on passe. Voila. <laughs> Well, you know, kind of a portable Solomon, right? Well, I'm going to have to buy one of those. Come on, let's go. Now, you, that's yours, that's yours, son. Merci, monsieur. Oh, the war's Pour over. Employers. Just one of justice, that's all. Fatima and I go, Carter. Oh, go right ahead. You can tell me. Do you actually wear the stuff? Or do you just like to rub it against your cheek? By the way, if you are the violent type, the jewelry's in the top drawer. Actually, I'm looking for our chief Stuart Benson. He's, uh, he's missing. Could have gone very far on this ship. Excuse me. <clears throat> uh, Carter, haven't you forgotten something? Twelve o'clock. What? It's Cinderella. Open up, or I'll turn into a pumpkin. Come on in. God, you look terrible. The eyes, lips. Tongue. You seem to indicate a cerebral hemorrhage. Poor old Browning. I'm afraid that he was murdered, sir. Murdered? Why should anyone want to murder him? It appears that he was getting a message that someone did not want us to get. says, suggest you apprehend, and then I can't make the rest of it out. Do you mean to say that someone was prepared to kill in order to stop the rest of that message getting through to us? I'm afraid so, sir. But who? I have the slightest idea, sir. But I do suggest that we change our course very gently to Nassau. And hand over to the police. Thank you, sir. Right. What about Browning? Browning? Well, as the doctor said, he died of natural causes. I suggest that we, uh, <clears throat> leave it at that. Right. We'll keep Browning's body for the police and hold a mock funeral in the morning.
Mr. Carter, it's me, Gomez. Mr. Carter. Are you all right? Yes, yes, I'm fine, thank you, sir. What happened? I think... I think I know where the fence is, sir. Where? It's probably ten miles back at the bottom of the Clare Good God. Browning and now Benson, what the hell is going on in my ship? Thank you. I don't know, Captain. I really, really don't know. Oh, by the way, Captain. Yes? May I ask you a question, sir? Yes. Preston. Why is that as a recommendation satisfactory, sir? Let us pray. We brought nothing into this world. What? Well, sorry, Monsieur. Ship's regulation. Oh, I understand. And the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. For as much as it hath pleased Almighty God to take unto himself the soul of our dear brother Edward, here departed, we therefore commit the body to the deep in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Twenty-two seconds. So, whoever killed Browning must have overheard the message coming in on a receiver and be near enough to kill Browning before Browning could relay the message to us. Well, from our timings, that would eliminate all but four staterooms. Conway's, Van Herden's, Mrs. Beresford's, and Sedan's. Yes, that's quite correct, sir. Except that Van Herden was gambling and Mrs. Beresford was at dinner. So now we're the only person in his cabin dining alone. As for Conway, sir. He was missing. Conway? Yes, sir. Ah. In that case, this evening I shall give a cocktail party and keep everyone busy. Mr. Carter and Mr. Dexter, you will go through Mr. Conway's cabin with a fine tooth comb. Uh, with your permission, sir, I should like to also include Mrs. Adat's cabin. An old man, bedridden with cancer. Yes, sir. No, you are not going to disturb him. It will take me only a few moments. No. Let's you, Monsieur, Madame. Many more bets, please. Twenty-five thousand for the drip. Mr. Conway. Mrs. Skinner. Could you tell me who they buried at sea today, please? Well, the radio officer uh, apparently had a heart attack. No more bets. I'll share with you a confidence. What would you think, Madam? Gin and tonic. Right now. Carter, you will take Dexter and go through Mr. Conway's cabin. I would prefer to take Mr. Preston, sir. As you wish. There's something in the Hippocratic Oath about not using firearms. Sir, I want you to stand by the radio room all night. Lock yourself in and don't open the door for anybody. Yes, sir. Thank you. 
There's no sign of him. Doctor, do me a favor. Oh, not again, Carter. I want you to meet me outside Sir Dan's cabin in 20 minutes. Um, no card. No card. Stick it on there. Damn it, Conway is still there. Look who's here. Um, may I come in? How forward of you, Carter. Why well, don't you look pretty? Thank you, so do you. By the way, have you met Carter, the ship's snoop? Yeah, hello, Carter. Be very careful of him, darling. He's got the weirdest little hang-ups. He looks normal. Thank you. See you, Carter. Pressing. Pressing. Yeah, it seems to be working. Never fail. Never fail. If you'll excuse me. <laughs> Who the hell is that guy? Do you know? I don't know. I don't know anybody here. See, I told you, you both had a lot in common. Hey, what's that? You both love to be left alone. Mrs. Beresford! Can I entice you to a little champagne? I doubt, Mr. Carreras, if you could entice me to anything. Excuse me. You really confirm my opinion that women should stick to divorce and children. From the little that I know of you, Mr. Carreras, I can well understand why women should believe in both. Oh, it's a lover's quarrel. I'll be the referee. My name is Howard Conway. Louis Carreras. Conway, Conway. That's that? I recall the name, but I know the face. And I am a man of inferior rank in, in different manners, excuse me. And sub substance. Which she invests in beautiful women. Be good, darling. Don't go too far away, darling. First, where the bloody hell have you been? I've been searching. <laughs> Get out of here. Preston, where are you going? Well, we'd better tell the captain. I think the captain's cocktail party should go undisturbed. And we'll just uh, continue and search Conway's cabin. Oh, by the way, Preston, what were you doing outside the radio room? Well, I was. Uh... You were, yes, Preston? I was looking for Mrs. Skinner, sir. Oh, really, Press? She sent me rather a frantic note, sir. Oh, no doubt Mrs. Skinner fancies younger men. Look here, Carter. I don't have to take that from you. Preston! May I have your gun, please? Madam, you're ahead already. 
How about 17 black? <laughs> Please permit me. Oh, no. Some days you can't lose. Remarkable man, Mr. Van Heeren. How's that? 20,000. Banned from every casino from Vegas to Monte Carlo. What? 25. He found a legal way to break the bank. Oh. Well, he spends the rest of his days on a floating casino. Mr. Sudan, stateroom. Uh, Mr. Tony Sudan would like to see one of you immediately. Uh, he's with the captain. Yeah. You ought to go to Mr. Tony Sudan. He's with the captain. I'm the ship's doctor. The captain sent me to inquire about the health of Mr. Sudan. Yeah. You're not English? I am German. Oh, German? Uh, Deutsch? Well, uh, ich, uh, ich kann ein wenig Deutsch sprechen. Uh, wie geht's, Herrn Sudan? Good. Er schläft. Good, good. Well, it must be very lonely for you in here. Uh, the captain wonders if you'd care to come and have a meal with us. Uh, der Kapitän wünscht, dass Sie mit uns essen. Ah, yeah, yeah, you see. Herr Tony Sedan, wir gesagt, sein Onkel sei sehr krank. Perhaps I can help Mr. Sedan in some way. If you like, I can even help them. I do speak English, doctor. And your help is not required. I must ask you to leave now, immediately. Oh, of course, of course. Now, perhaps you could help me brush up my German little boy. Many years since I learned to school. My time is fully occupied. Will you go on, please? Oh, sir. Sir. Now, I'm sure you must read English very well. I've got quite a few paperback books by Captain Mao. The only two priests that you have, though. It's very kind of you, but I have plenty to read. Munich. Oh, Munich. Well, 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 that takes me back. Have you ever been to Scotland, my dear? Nine. Oh, you would love Scotland. It's not unlike Bavaria. You know, we have these wonderful mountains in the north. And if you ever visit... Vielen Dank. Gute Nacht. Conway, is, is he... Uh... Is he what, Tony? <laughs> well... He happens to be a man that I love very much. Oh, fine. Excuse me. Captain, Captain, get me a whiskey, sir. Yes, you can. I found these, sir. Conway. Sir, Dan, sir. Carter, I distinctly told you... Excuse me a moment, Captain. Excuse me, sir. I wonder if I could have a word with you outside, sir. What's the trouble? I'd like as little fuss as possible. I have a gun in Mr. Sedan's bag. Haven't I, Mr. Sedan? He has, yeah. Maybe it is. Mr. Sedan! I believe she's come to tell you that we found the headset in your ventilation shower. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. I hate to have to use this again. Ladies and gentlemen, please be quite calm. Here, bartender, give me some water this way. Carter, take those men down. You're making a big mistake, Carter. Really? How big? Move. What? Ah! What? Wait. Oh, oh, no. Jeez. Oh. Oh. Stand. 
stand up, Carter. Stand up and drop your gun. Drop it! What's going on? Tony? All right. Move Murray. Come on, let's go! Back in your chairs. your men to drop their guns. Exactly as you are. Unit 3, confirm engine room. Unit 3, confirm engine room. We're on our way. Master. Unit 7, Master. confirm radio room. Come here. Unit 7, confirm radio room. Radio room confirmed. Dr. Marston. I've got to attend to the wounded. All right, get him out of here. Come in, units four and six. Round up the rest of the crew. We have confined the crew to their quarters. Uh, you're damn lucky, Carter. Looks a hell of a mess, but it's only suffers. You'll be able to walk. Oh, you're wrong, Doctor. What? I said you're wrong. I can't walk at all. Okay. Unit two. Now get us to the sick bay. Right. Pull it, house, Captain. Pull it. He's dead. Unit five. Report to position. You can blame your captain and his crew for this. Now just do as you're told, and nothing more will happen to you. Correct. You seem to have taken charge here, son. But before you kill anybody else, I'm an old man, and I got a last request. I'd like to finish this game. Why don't you do that? Thanks kindly. I appreciate that. Come on, Frenchie. Get your ass up here. Not one of those hijackings.
My men have instructions to shoot to kill any passenger or crew member who does not cooperate. The remaining crew will be confined to the quarters. If our instructions are obeyed, no one else will be harmed. But my commands and those of my men must be obeyed without question. Within 36 hours, all passengers and crew will be transferred to another ship. Transmit this immediately. Nobody's to leave. Well, why don't you use it? The violence was the captain's fault. And he certainly paid for it. Didn't he? I'm going to go help the wounded. She's, uh, a lot more helpful if she gets her own way. Why would anybody want to hijack this ship? Why? Cargo? Cargo? Human cargo, Doctor. There's enough multi-millionaires aboard this ship to turn Wall Street a whitish shade of pale. suspicion that one of us shouldn't be here. My God, Carter, you really do have the weirdest little hang-ups. <laughs> Tony Sedan, God. Didn't Tony Sedan say his uncle was paralyzed? Yes, I believe so. That's odd. He wasn't when I just saw him. What did you say, Mrs. Benson? I said his uncle is not paralyzed. Not again. Could you knock Preston out for me for a couple of hours? In no way! What do you think you're up to, Carter? Look, they had to have a contact on board this ship. A member of our crew had to have taken the headset and put it in Sir Dan's stateroom. You don't think Preston's involved? It's a possibility. Right. You came to lend a hand, Mrs. Bellas, make some coffee, would you please? Is it done, Doctor? Yes. Uh, could you put something into a cup of coffee to lay that guard out for, say, uh, a couple of hours? Now, look, Carter, I'm not going to do another thing until you tell me what harebrained scheme you're about to get involved in. This whole thing has been too well planned. Carreras is a mercenary. Now, whoever hired him could be on board this ship. Well, <laughs> 24, black and even. 
Well, uh, that's pretty good. Frenchy? Hey. Help yourself, Mr. Van Hurden. You're an honest man. Now, if we cooperate, uh, yes, yes, I know that word is foreign to you, but if we do, we'll all be transferred safely to another ship. Fourteen people have been killed. Transferred? Oh, yes. We'll be transferred, all right. But it's someplace very cold, very uncomfortable, and very, very unsafe. For once, I think our captain's making sense, though it kills me to admit it. Please, Doctor. It'll taste very bitter. That should knock him out for about half an hour. You are super seller of somebody. Guards all over the place. Come on. Mr. Cross wants you. Come on, quick.
If this weather gets worse, we'll never make the rendezvous. I'll check Gomez as I'm watching. more to me that I've got the weirdest little hang-ups I'll smash you right in the face. I'd prefer to be kissed. Shine the torch in there. Mm. Look, that's how they did it. Over there. Shine it over here. They came on board at these crates. Stupid, but, uh, but what's this bomb for? You're always asking questions, Carter. If you'd stayed out of this, nobody would have been killed. The bomb, the rest of the passengers, and the bomb will be transferred to another ship when we rendezvous. Transferred? But for what? Gold, Mr. Carter. Approximately one billion dollars worth of American gold. You're... You're going to attack an American battleship? In this? Uh -uh. An American bullion ship. Disguised as a freighter. Can you imagine that once upon a time you held a torch for this young man? <laughs> Family. And you were the contractor aboard a ship? Please. 
Please, Mr. Carter. I'd like to help you. I don't believe you. Please, Mr. Carter. Let me try. All right? Get a rope. And hang it over the hospital window. See. You understand? See, see. Which one of you killed Tony? So many people have died, Mr. Carreras. Which one was Tony? Is that leg of yours really broken, Carter? Ask Dr. Marsden. He'll tell you. It's a multiple fracture. Let's see if you can stand on it, Carter. Come on. Stand up. Get up! Carreras! He didn't kill him. I did. And I'm no longer frightened of you. You'll all be transferred in the morning to another ship. Get him out. Mrs. Beresford, you'd explain just once more what Sir Dan said to us down there. Said that the passengers and the bomb be transferred to the other ship. He said all of us were going to die anyway. The bomb? Yeah, could he have meant the bomb? The bomb's inactive. That's right, Mrs. Beresford, the bomb's inactive. That's why. Dr. Torton is on board the ship to activate the bomb. Oh, no. That's a plan that can't work without Torton. Now I've got to get to Torton before they do. You mean to dismantle it? That's not what Carter had in mind. Is it? You're going to kill him, aren't you? Come on, Torton. Blessed. He's hard. Oh, no. No. Bastard. Take it back. Can you find me something to swing off? Rope, a flex? Flex, flex, cable. Extension lead, emergency supply. Great, Mrs. Beresford, lock that door. Give me the other end, here. I'll fix it to the bunk. Can I help? Uh, the gun. Get the gun. Just in case I don't come back. 
why don't we bury the hatchet? Certainly. Right in your head. <laughs> what the hell did you do that for? Kissing me in the corridor. Oh, this is better. What a pity. You're such a bitch. Just stand there. Get rid of the body. He's got the other rope. Got to get you out of here, chum. Finish it. 
Celebrate very. Kill him. Come on. You don't want to. Tell me, Sally. Who are you, and what the hell do you do besides haunt me? Miami Radio reports scientists and bomb disappeared from the Gray Research Station. The authorities are unable to trace the scientist's wife.
coming back. See you, man. How are you, eh? All right. Now, man, I'll explain it to you later. All right? Just one minute. Hi. Right. I know. I know it's none of my business, but, um... Conway. Who's Mr. Conway? You're right, Carter. It is none of your business. You haven't answered my question, Mrs. Burson. He's a very private man with a lot of problems. Just leave it at that. Problems. What kind of problems, Mrs. Beresford? What kind of problems, Mrs. His wife Beresford? died. He's got problems. Are you satisfied? What are you doing on board the ship? Helping an old friend through a divorce. Signal, sir. Ship in distress. Bearing 225, 12 miles. Okay. They've blown the main boiler. Emergency, full ahead. Steer 225. Full ahead, 225. Uh, Captain, uh, sorry to wait you, sir. Uh, there's a ship in distress, southwest 12 miles. I've altered course accordingly. Um, the Caribbean Star, sir. Too close to the starboard side, sir. 
Acknowledge? Yes, sir. Spark, acknowledge the last message. Port 15. Port 15, sir. Get the radio room to signal any other ships in the area. Yes, sir. Sparks, uh, send out a CQ, would you? Yes, sir. mad. Unicorn One, missiles are aimed at your bridge and main deck. Come alongside. Well, whoever they are, better do what they say. For the time being, God help Lloyds.
Is he okay? He's all right. Oh, God. God. You said you switched it. I did, I did, I did switch it. How on earth did that happen? Key. You said it was around Carreras' neck. I've got to get to him. That's impossible. He's surrounded by too many guards. Have you got any guns, Captain? Very pistol. Yeah, well, that's better than nothing. Go on, get it. My job is saving lives. Where do I find those crates, Captain? This way. I'll be in the engine room. Fast. Take care of yourself. My... Uh, my wife. Is she all right? Your wife? Blonde. And this is Skinner? Skinner. No, that, that was her maiden name. Your was dead. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> Come on, move it. We haven't got much time. Tirarlo ya. Eso empezó ya, que ya está todo listo. Que llevamos aquí 50 horas esperando, hombre. Empieza con esa primera. Y ahora, Antonio, muévete más hacia la derecha, hombre. Ya voy, ya voy. Que la derecha, me voy a gritar y va a trabajar, hombre. Que Miguel, mira.
job. Engine room. Mr. Van Herden, could I talk to you for a moment? I think you might be able to help me. Because something, something really worries me. Why are you sitting here with the ship in flames all around you. 
And not a ship, but an atom bomb, a hundred yards away, about to blow up. <laughs> it can't be. He just, he just checked your watch. You know what time that bomb's going up. You know what I'm going to do? Well, I'm, I'm going to sit right here. We haven't got too much time, but I'm going to sit right here and make sure that you don't leave that chair. Because when you take your ass off that chair, I'm going to break your neck. There's something else that worries me. I thought I had a, a key to this mystery. And I thought it was someplace. But I was wrong. It wasn't what I thought it was. You're pretty close, son. You know, in Texas, we have a saying, in the minute before you hang, you see everything, good and clear. But you're wrong about the key, because it will not work without the professor and that ape Carraris killed him. That's exactly where you're wrong. You see, your little communication center let you down. Dr. Tordman is very much alive. Oh, Lord. It's a whole new ball game. All right, here's my deal. I provide the key. You let me try to get away. God knows I won't get far. They got my number, but that is the deal. Otherwise, I'm just gonna sit here with you and blow up. What do you say? You have the key. There's the key. Good luck. Good luck to you, sir. Protecting my interest, Mr. Carter. My father owns the ship. 
Your what? My father. That's right, Mr. Carter. So you take good care of him. And good luck. All that gold. Wow. 